We are talking about girls and early puberty, and I very much wanted to do this topic today because, as you're seeing, I know my audience can, can get their head around complicated issues. The fact is, the reality of this topic is much more complex than it's typically reported in the press. So if people are running out and getting organic food and fearful of estrogens in the food, that's not the issue even. It's not even the issue. So just see what you can learn here today. I've got a pediatric endocrinologist to help me out, Dr. Duke. Also, Laura Christian and her daughter, Cindy, who showed signs of puberty at age four and a half. Now, again, that's a medical problem at that age, but she's been dealing with the emotional effects, so we're going to talk about that. So first, I want to define precocious puberty. And again, that's a medical disorder. According to the Mayo Clinic, it's when somebody's body begins changing from a child to an adult too soon. Puberty that begins before the age of eight for girls and before the age of nine for boys. And Dr. Duke, as you said, once you, you evaluate somebody, you're looking for adrenal diseases and central nervous system disorders. Once you satisfy yourself there's not a, a treatable medical condition, you say sometimes you can just let it run and sometimes you have to intervene. When those patients present to me, mm -hmm. and we cannot, first of all, we need to think that, you know, is this considered to be normal or abnormal? Now, girls start breast development at the age between six to eight years old. And the question is, how rapid progression of this puberty. So besides, I did a blood test to evaluate the pubertal status by looking at the hormone levels. I also look at the bone x-ray. This bone x-ray to looking at the bone maturation to see that how far advanced of those pubertal effect on specific patients. So the idea is if your bones are closing rapidly, you might want to stop the puberty, even though you don't need to medically, to be sure they don't close their growth plates and end up at a short stature, right. shorter because, than they should right. be. Right, because, because the, the thing is that sometimes patients come at six years old. You look at the bone x-ray. If it's six years old, we can wait a little bit. Okay. But if it's nine, maybe it's too fast. So we need to slow it down or stop the puberty. Got it. Now, Laura, when you first noticed this in your daughter, what did you think? Uh, was very taken aback and was surprised because that was not something that I had had experience with at all. I've actually dealt with patients that have this, that, uh, these kinds of changes that occur in infancy. I'm sure you've seen that as an endocrinologist, and it's usually the parents are, they don't know what to make of it. They're sort of bewildered. And I understand you went to a lot of doctors. Um, the area that we live in, um, I immediately took her within probably three months of noticing that she started to develop certain uh, signs and took her to the doctor and what, what were the signs um, hair. hair growth and body odor mood swings mostly mm -hmm. eventually by the time that we ended up finally being able to be seen by uh, children's hospital la we were she had actually started doing the breast development as well and so it it, it was rather frustrating because i was i'm one parent that's actually being uh, proactive proactive yeah. about it and, and watching and saw it and then went and had to push really to to get to the point where I could get anywhere near a diagnostic tools well, because there's none where we are well, did, did you deny it at first I mean you no. jumped right okay you immediately knew there was a medical problem yeah and were you worried because I'm sure people started talking about what's called androgenizing tumors and things at the beginning yes. You yes. Usually not wouldn't say usually but not uncommonly that is what causes this tumors especially younger Children. younger ages right. so that must have been very scary uh, very scary and in watching watching your your little one not be a little one for very long and that was what and as I look back seeing from when she was born that had been evidently something that had been progressing because she st she grew way too fast and now Cindy I'm gonna turn to you do you remember this whole experience yes I did what do you think about it now I think that it's okay because I'm not I'm used, more used to it now. When it was happening, what did you think about it? I was kind of scared because I didn't know what was going to happen. Was, was having to see all these doctors and being, your mom being worried, was that, did that have an impact on you? I'm sure it must. Yeah, because I, I wasn't sure about it and I didn't know what was going to happen or anything. Cindy, how old are you now? I'm nine. Nine. And let me ask you this, did, did the other children uh, notice what was happening to you and were they unkind? No. Nobody else seemed to know about it? Just one of my friends at school. So you shared it with her? Yes. And how, what did she think? What was her reaction? She was thinking that we should sh share what we have been doing so we, can, we wouldn't be afraid. 
That's, so she was very helpful to you, huh? This young lady yes. also has the same issue going on. She's being treated by Children's Hospital Fresno for the same exact issue. Oh, how, how interesting. A cluster. <laughs> Do you see clusters of this? Actually, I got a referral from different family who were friends. So they refer friends to us. But I'm, but I'm, I'm actually honestly asking that question. Does it, does it happen in clusters? Are people studying clusters around the country, or is it just one of those random events? I would say that random event, more than yeah. just a clustering thing. Random events. Yeah. Do you have anything you'd like to say to parents out there now who either A, may be seeing changes in their kids and what to do about it, or B, are just concerned about puberty at a young age? Uh, particularly be proactive and be observing as much as you can of your children both female and, and male, obviously. Um, our chief concern, as, as for parents, obviously, was their health and well-being. Yeah, of course. But okay. wanting to really make certain that that the early onset of any of these types of symptoms would not interfere with her development and or her self-esteem and emotional well, well-being. Which I, th which I think is the issue yes. as we begin to address this topic. Let, let me show you a little bit of data here. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, the average age of puberty for girls, remember, not menarche, but puberty, in 1800 was 18. I hope I differentiated those two things for you because everyone thinks puberty means menstrual period, which is breast development. breast development. Menarche is later. Correct. Was 18. In 1960, it was 14. Today, it is 11. Now, my understanding, Dr. Duke, is most of that is because of good nutrition. Yes. Is that right? You so most can of that say is, that. is that's a health benefit. We're seeing health benefits there for the most part. Mm -hmm. Is that true? You can say that in a way because most of the time that, as you know, that obesity is a driving force. Well, I think, I think, I th I w might we say that we've gone too far? So at 14 probably is a reasonable age for puberty, but 11 suggests we've gone too far with our nutrition. <laughs> We're overfeeding. I w you know what? I think we cannot really draw a conclusion that nutrition is the main important factor who push or, you know, who, uh, you know, make their... Uh, um, Minaki start earlier, but I think it's multiple factors, which is again we can go into details about the you know chemicals, environmental factor. Well, some of those can be part of. But it. so let's let's state that again. So puberty is happening earlier. Feeding uh, proper nutrition is part of why it's dropped. The fact that it's dropped to such an extreme extent may have to do with obesity, but it has a series of other very complicated neurobiological factors, right? Factor. Insulin, insulin resistance, one of the things that sort of comes up once in a while. That's usually associated with obesity. Uh, which is right. part of the obesity story, but we're not talking about exogenous estrogens or things from the outside world, are we? This is one thing that a lot of research have been looking to it. This exogenous estrogen, another terminology we call endocrine disruptor, as I told you before. Now, a lot of studies look into exogenous substances Things that from the may, outside. Correct, yeah. that may have a major impact because those substances have the estrogen effect which is can create pretty much that, you know. And we haven't found that thing yet. We do have some studies show some of those chemicals. They're not, are they in the food? Are they out there all over the place? And well, what, do we need to worry about it? A lot of study, good example, you know, one of the small study in Puerto Rico years ago. I got to be out of here in 10 seconds. Go. Okay. So anyway, they're looking at that. They found that some of phthalate, which is basically have been showing 68% of those girls who develop puberty early. All right. I'm going to have to put up on the internet or something what that chemical is.